extension needed more time or help an assignment the teachers would help you it was definitely a notch up from carol but that's to be expected um as long as you're good with time management and advocating which carol is very keen on i think you'll do fine and succeed what is what is the what are like three things that you would say about Brimmer that would entice a Carol family right now? What would you say? Um, I think at Carol, innovation is pretty big. You know, there you have the innovation space there, and it's called the Fab Lab or whatever. Uh, we have a lot of that stuff at Brimmer, and lots of stuff is based off of that class projects, electives, and there's just lots of unlimited opportunities to fulfill and do it from, from like photography to sports to movie making. It's just like a step up. You can focus deeply more on stuff versus doing it as a hobby. Great, thanks. Thomas, do you want, it looks like you're sharing the space with uh, Ms. Bernanke. Do you want to hop in to her screen? There you go. Yeah. Um, so I definitely agree with what Ben said. Um, my transition wasn't horrible. And I'd say one of the one of the key things that I'm um, looking back on my transition that helped me a lot was uh, self advocacy, and really um, finding those support systems here. We have things like the math lab and like the writing lab. Uh, the math lab I went to a lot for help with my math assignments. Um, and then the writing lab, um, teachers will help you go over your papers and revise them so they can be uh, even better. And what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a senior. Uh, yeah. And how's the college experience going? It's going pretty good. Yeah. All the way from Carroll to college. It's yeah. really exciting. Yep. What, what would you say? Um, I know you guys are in different activities. So what are some of the activities that you do that make you feel like you're part of this community here? Yeah, so I definitely say um, I participate in a lot of sports. Um, I do basketball and lacrosse. Um, it's the same atmosphere that I felt at Carroll, the same competitiveness with also the, um, the aspect of learning the sport and being supported by your teammates and coaches. Great. Thank and Ben, can you can you talk about some of the activities that you do on a daily basis just to sort of frame mm -hmm. who you are as students? And when we get to questions, people can direct to Um, So some of the activities I do in the fall, I do cross country, which we have a very good cross country team. We just won the championship last week for the fifth year in a row. Um, and then in the winter, I do curling, which I learned last year was a pretty fun sport. They're always very nice and teach you. And then in the spring, I just do running club, which is like a team continuation of cross country. We still have races. And then last year, I did theater tech for the play and the musical, which was a fun experience. And then I guess for electives, I am right now doing problem solving through design and architectural CAD modeling, which are for steam diploma program and my concentration is architecture so basically i have to take do an internship uh related courses at school and then an online course that's related to that and i get a second diploma when i graduate fantastic great thanks ben so a, a couple of great questions coming in already so we'll we'll just sort of do a little portion here and, and get the students on their way back to class or or free periods, whatever they have coming up next. Um, but I just want to get some great ones coming in. So um, can you both talk about, and I know you, you, you addressed this a little bit already, but talk about just transition from an academic standpoint. What were the hardest parts about coming in? Where did you feel really well prepared? Um, we, know, we, you know, we know the advocacy piece where I talked about that, but can you just kind of get into that a little bit? Thomas, you'd start or Ben, either, either one. Yeah, sure. Um, so I would say the hardest part of my transition was probably actually going out and using those resources. Um, after the first semester, I didn't have 
a grade that I was really proud of in my uh, geometry class. So I was recommended by the teacher to go try out the math lab. And um, that really helped with the, the rest of the year going on. She also helped me a lot with some of the assignments. Um, she, she was always open to meeting and just going through what was happening in the class with me if I was confused about anything. Um, and I'd really say that teacher to student relationship um, was something that really helped. It was something that was familiar from Carol. Um, and then I'd say probably the thing I was most prepared for was um, probably English class and just the strategies that I learned at Carroll for reading and writing really helped me in that class and got me a grade that I was proud of. Awesome. Hey, Ben? Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with Thomas on this one. Uh, definitely English and history, the writing and reading parts of it were probably the easiest parts of last year because I think Carol focuses on reading and writing a lot more than other things because that's just what's harder for people who are dyslexic. So I felt very prepared for that. And I used the math lab a lot last year and advocated, which is, you know, some teachers gave me extra help in science because that was a hard class. But yeah. Can you both just reference um, homework level compared to Carol as well as pace of instruction, pace of, of coursework? Um, yeah, so I'd say the homework level was probably about the same for me. I mean, a little ramped up in the beginning, um, but as long as you can manage your time well um, and really just schedule out when you're going to do assignments and um, make sure like you're reading them ahead, all the stuff they teach you at Carroll, it, it really helped with that time management. And um, the pace in the class um, was never really a problem for me personally in any class other than um, geometry. I had never really been in a traditional note-taking class like that. But after about the first semester, I'd say I got used to it and started using strategies that I uh, learned from Carol, which really helped me to keep up with the pace of it. Um, anything so, yep. Yeah, I'd say the time management part of it is very important because like, you know, some nights you'll have an hour of homework at home, some nights you'll have more. It also depends how well you use your study halls. Like if you're just goofing off with friends the whole time, then you're going to feel that consequence later, which I think, I mean, I used my time pretty wisely last year, so I really didn't have too much homework. And then the note aspect, taking notes in all your classes is definitely a little bit more challenging at the beginning, but I think once you get into it, you figure it out, you know, taking pictures of the whiteboard or asking your teacher for the slides to go through after class, so you're not rushing to take stuff down in class. I think it's it's manageable and you figure out strategies to help you complete it. Thanks, Ben. So the next question is really about um, support, which Karen will, will dive into in a moment, but. Uh, have either of you found it necessary to have outside of school support during your time at Brimmer versus the built-in supports that we have available to you here, either tutoring or, or writing center? Um, no, I really just use the resources here. Um, these past two years, I've had a math tutor through the school. Um, so the, the tutor will come here um it'll either be Mr. Schwartz who runs the math lab or this year since I'm taking a little bit of a higher up math it is um another tutor he comes to the school um and really just helps me with the assignments and understanding what's going on in class great thanks Thomas uh any other I'm just looking at a couple of questions we're going to address here momentarily to everybody that that'll sort of Karen will cover any other student specific questions, some great ones already, but anything else while well, we have some live Carol alumni uh, with us this morning? Ben or Thomas, anything that you'd want to add um, 
that, that a, perhaps a, a Carroll student should be considering as part of the process? Uh, yeah, I think definitely find Miss Bernanke and talk to her at the <laughs> beginning. So like she knows you and can and, like even have stuff set up in case something like doesn't go well or you need extra help because running in right before something's due or oh, I'm at, oh, the exam now, I don't know anything. It's not what you want to do. Great. Thank you, Ben. Uh, two questions just came in both sort of the, a similar vein, uh, social transition, social life here at Bremer. Do you want to talk about sort of that transition socially? I, I realize recognizing that Ben, particularly different for you coming in during a, you know, a, a pandemic year, um, perhaps a little bit different for Thomas, but if you could both take that question, it'd be great. Uh, sure. So I think, um, Social life wasn't really a problem for me. Um, the My grade is of, I think, about 46 people. So I pretty much know and have a pretty good relationship with all of them. And um, I, find, I found friends and a group that I fit in with uh, pretty quickly here. Within around like a week or two, I had people to go talk to, people to sit with at lunch. And, um, you know, coming from Carroll, which is not as small of a school, but still a pretty small school compared to um, grade sizes that you see in public school or stuff like that. Um, I found that this small environment really helped me. Um, I guess I would say Carroll is, is bigger than this, obviously like two times the size. So like you had your group and you didn't like really like know everybody else as much. I think at Brimmer, it's like a very tight knit community. So like everybody knows each other, you know, like you're all friends or friendly at least. And then you still have your group, but like there's no like beef for anything. Everybody's just friends. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Ben. One uh, additional question here. Have either of you taken honors courses uh, if so, how did you make that decision? Who was involved in that decision? And how did you find the, the coursework? Uh, I've personally not taken any honors courses uh, here. I took one honors course last year. I took honors history in ninth grade. I think, I don't know, I decided that my mom, and I'd say it was a good idea that year because history wasn't that bad it was not it's like I think I had to write like three essays and do a creative project which wasn't that bad for me but I think it's nice you always can drop the course at any time in case it like it's not going well and then honors course I think it I think it's a good idea to start off in ninth grade just try it out because there's no real consequences and then now you know if I want to do this next year or not Great, thanks, Ben. Uh, a question around foreign language. We, we get this a lot, of course, from from Carroll School families. We'll, we'll sort of address it in a um, in, in a larger context. Uh, we several Karen, you might have a better sense of the ex exact number. Several of our Carroll students will go on to take a world language. Um, it, they may take it in the ninth grade year. They may take it in the tenth grade year. We do have a three year consecutive language requirement. So some students, and I, I've certainly worked with. Uh, several Carroll students over the years directly as an advisor, and some will sort of join a ninth grade, see how it's going, see um, you know what life feels like as, as a high school student here uh, before taking on that additional class. Um, if they do not uh, take a, a world language, we certainly work with them to um, to make sure that their course load is full and enriching. Um, and, and certainly when it comes to transcript development, uh, you know, everything looks sort of good from a college uh, admissions perspective. Thomas, I, Ben, I, top of my head, I'm not sure if you're taking a language, do you? Um, I don't take a language currently, <laughs> but I just, took, this year I started taking an extra course. So like you can just fill in that block of something you're more interested in. So I'm taking like AP Comsa this year, which I need for STEAM but that's just replacing a language. Yeah, so my freshman year, um, I did take a language. 
And after that, I kind of decided that um, it wasn't really for me and that I would rather focus on other things and that it would benefit me to uh, not have it in my schedule. So actually, I kind of did the same thing as Ben. I uh, filled those spots up with um, classes like AP Computer Science and classes like programming, um, just so I could learn something different while also um, filling those blocks in with something that would help me. Great, thanks, Thomas. All right, so I think we have probably time for one more student question. If anybody has one, if not, we'll move on. Give everybody the, the awkward moment of pause here if we <laughs> see anything in the chat. All right, excellent. I want to thank both of our students, Thomas, Ben. Thanks for for joining us this morning. I know, I know parents always appreciate the student perspective. So, thank you both, and uh, let you get on with your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, bye. Bye. All right. So, uh, one more introduction to make here. Josh Newdell just joined us. Josh is the head of the upper school at Brimmer. So we're gonna we're gonna let him introduce himself and then get started with his portion of the program. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. I apologize for being a few minutes later. It was one of those mornings. <laughs> so, um, Karen, did you want me to run the PowerPoint? Yeah, that would be great. Please. Okay, sure. Just give me one moment to uh, to pull it up. While Josh is doing that, we'll just give him a, a minute. There was another question that came in right at the end there about uh, we, we can certainly address the world language piece. That, that's an, a fairly common conversation that we have on this end when, when Carol students enroll is sort of, if you do have a language waiver, what decisions should you make? And that's often a, a partnership with 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 home, with, with the college guidance department, particularly the students joining after C9 and joining in 10th grade versus ninth grade. Um, but a lot of students will, will give it that one year to sort of decide, is this something for me or, or not? And we've had plenty of Carol students who excelled in languages you know, Spanish for, Spanish for, I don't know, she might've been honors, but yeah, so. <laughs> but it really is a, a, yeah, a personal decision and, and one that, you know, again, if, if a student's not going to, um, uh, not going to take a language, we just work with, uh, with the family uh, to develop a, a transcript that looks full and um, is going to be enjoyable for the student. Um, Brian, if you just want to allow me to share my screen, yep. I can move us forward. It should be, you should be all set, Josh. Is that not, I can make you a, um, here, do this. I'm good now, yeah. Thank okay. You. All right, so hi again. So again, my name is Josh and I'm the head of the upper school, and this is my seventh year here at Brimmer. Uh, and it's been great to see this partnership grow between us and Carol over the over the past um, past number of years. Uh, and I'm glad you got to hear from Ben and Thomas, who are two of our current Carol students. And we've had a lot of other great uh, Carol alums come through and become Brimmer alums that are often doing amazing things. And so I just thought I'd share a little bit of the info. And I apologize that I missed a little bit of the earlier part. So hopefully I'm not, I may be repeating a little bit that might have been said, but um, this will just give you a little bit of sense of what the upper school experience here is at Brimmer. Um, and I, I'm glad we're able to do this on Zoom because it makes it easier for everyone. But I also kind of miss driving up to Carroll and meeting in that that nice room and having that morning sun come through those glass windows. Um, and and come in and seeing you all in person. So just a general sense. So the Brimmer schedule, we work on a weekly block schedule. So Mondays always look the same and Tuesdays always look the same. The classes meet either, um, if it's an academic class, it meets about 200 minutes um, per a week. And if it's an elective block, it meets somewhere between 170 to 180 minutes per week. But it's not a rotating block schedule. It's just a set schedule. And then the classes meet um, either those three or four times a week, depending on the type of class it is. Um, students over the course of their time at Brimmer, um, when they move from ninth grade through, it's sort of this process as they're getting older of working towards increasing independence and more independence. So that when they're finally going off to college, they know how to handle their time and to be great self-advocates for themselves and, and work towards being successful um, in, in college. And so one of those ways in which they 
increase independence is through how what they do during those non-class periods. So in ninth grade, they're all assigned to a study hall, um, and there's an upper school teacher that proctors that. And the goal of that really is to help to start to have them think about how they use that that free period, that study hall time, to get work done. And Brimmer students are really active. They're involved in sports after school, theater, um, the robotics team. You know, pretty much every student is doing something during that after school time. And our most successful students are the ones that are learning to use those study halls really effectively. So in ninth grade, they're 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 put into study halls, and then in tenth grade, they're uh, they're given free periods, which allows them to find a different nook around the school to do their work. Um, and students, we used to have study halls for for older students as well. Well, but we found that they actually were more efficient and more effective when they found a small group to work with or a space that there was the best space for them. So some prefer, you know, to be in a room that has a little bit more buzz going on and other kids prefer to be in a really quiet space, right, and be on their own versus maybe being with one or two friends. Um, and then that independence continues on as they start to get some off-campus privileges in 11th grade where they can leave campus and walk over, you know, where we are in Chestnut Hill. It's easy. It's about a five or six minute walk to the Star Market and the street there. And so, you know, we have lots of our 12th graders might head off to get a hamburger at Shake Shack or a taco at Chilicates or whatever else they were. Honestly, I think they probably single-handedly keep the... Uh, the uh, hot food bar open in Star Market through chicken tenders and mozzarella sticks sometimes. Um, though the numbers of kids going off for lunch has really gone down the past few years because our kitchen does such an incredible job um, with lunch. And if you're here for a visit, I encourage you to come at lunchtime and maybe sneak a peek at what they're what they're serving on a given day. Um, so the general uh, curriculum is students are generally taking the five core classes, although as you heard from Thomas, he's not taking a world language. Um, so he's taking another academic class in that place. And then one to two electives. For English, we require four years of English. Um, and in history, we require three years. I would say typically most of our students are taking four years of history, math, and science, even though those requirements are just three years. Um, and then students that don't take a fourth year of those classes when they're in 12th grade might double up in another academic area that they're really interested in. And this is just another way I think which we see sort of the maturation of students over time is that in ninth grade, the electives tend to be a little bit more arts focused or technology focused. Um, they're not really heavy academic classes. And then over the course of their time at Brimmer, they're shifting and maybe in 10th grade, they try out a arts class and a sort of a semester long academic class, like um, our archeology span class or a uh, Middle East class, you know, or, or things along those lines where they're starting to dip their toes into what does it mean to take another academic class in an area that they're really interested in. And then by the time they get to 11th grade, they're really starting to mix in those academic el electives with their regular classes and their other, and their other electives. Um, and so that's just the general sense of it. We do have our language requirement is three consecutive years of a language. But again, you know, students that have a language waiver, those are things that we accommodate all the time. And then all of our ninth graders are in our ninth grade wellness class, which touches on academic wellness, social emotional wellness, physical wellness. It's a year long class. Karen goes into that class a number of times over the year to talk about study skills from a sort of foundational level for all of our ninth graders, because we do have a mix of ninth graders are coming up to our middle school and new ones coming in. We want them all to get some basics um, and have a basic foundation in certain types of study habits or organizational skills. And then starting in 11th grade, which is really unique for Brimmer versus a lot of the other independent schools in this area is our 11th Seventh graders starting in January actually have a weekly college counseling class with our college counselors where they meet with them on a weekly basis and they go through an entire curriculum that takes them from the very beginning of, of the college process and ushers them through to transitioning to college. And so that's a really unique thing for Brimmer um, and our college counselors really know our students really well. There's two college count, two full-time college counselors for our 40 to 45 students. So that's probably a caseload that, you know, at a lot of other schools, you know, you know, that's 45 might be the caseload for some of those people versus half of that. Um, 
we have a really diverse offerings in the arts, um, as well as in our innovation design program and, you know, throughout our academic areas, I would encourage you to look through our curriculum guide. I'm not going to talk through all of our classes because it really does feel like a college guide sometimes. Um, but I do want to just point out um, something in the sport. So this is a new, uh, new for us this year is that we started offering a volleyball program this year. So those that may know um, some folks that started in Brimmer or have left Brimmer may, if you, your child was interested in volleyball, they might say like, no, Brimmer doesn't have a volleyball team. We actually began a volleyball team this year based off of student interest. And we originally were just going to try it out and hope that we get eight to 10 students so we could run a team. And we had, I think, 15 uh 15 students signed up for our girls volleyball team in the high school and then the middle school heard about it and they were really excited and we had 15 or 14 middle schoolers sign up and so now all of a sudden we have this launch pad um, for this thriving volleyball team um, and unfortunately our field hockey team just was struggling to get the numbers to field a team for almost a decade so we had to we had to retire field hockey which was very sad for people that have been here for a long time because that was our original, that was the first sport ever at Brimmer back when we were an all girls school. Um, and so in the seventies was when I think that that team got launched first. Um, so just finding the yeah, piece. So some other parts that I think make Brimmer unique that all of our students are able to access are signature pro diploma programs. So we offer these three programs that allow students to find almost like a minor where they can focus their electives in certain areas. So we have our creative arts diploma program, we have our global studies, and we have our STEAM, our science, technology, engineering, arts, and math program. And if you've come to any Brimmer events before or plan to, you will find out a lot more. I think Brian has information about some of the, the diploma program specific um, virtual panels that may be happening um, in the coming months or weeks. And so these programs really are for students that are really interested in a specific area and know they're interested in it, and they can focus their electives in this area. And the cool thing about this is that when they get to graduation, if they complete this, they actually get two diplomas. They get their Brimmer diploma, and then they get their diploma program program. So sometimes you might see a student at graduation holding a case open, um, and they'll show the two diplomas, two diplomas there. It's a big piece of pride for those students. About um, about 40%, about 30 to 40% of our upper schoolers are in a diploma program over the court of the of their time here. So it's not that everyone is doing it. And it's really an opportunity for students to make that choice either at the end of ninth grade or at the end of 10th grade. So it's not something you have to like worry about and stress about as if you have to declare before you get here. It's just something to be aware of um, that there's these types of opportunities. Um, and it's really a great way for a student to try on something that they might be interested in and also focus their coursework or their build a portfolio for the creative arts if they're thinking about wanting to pursue this later on in college or in work. Um, and then I'm just going to talk briefly about some of our support programs, um, which Karen probably touched on a little bit. Um, but we have a few programs that are just staffed by Brimmer teachers. So we have our math lab and our writing center and our learning center. It's staffed by Karen. And these are drop-in supports. And we also schedule students in for, for support for, for, you know, maybe a some of the, some students that come in, we notice that they may have a particular um, gap in math. And even though they're going into sort of whatever the next math class is for them, we might decide that we're going to assign them to the math lab once a week, um, which is just a free drop, a free support program. So we have some students that just drop in and others that it's on their schedule. And then as we look and assess, we might say, hey, you know, this student's done a great job transitioning. We don't think they need to be assigned to math lab anymore. They can just go when they need to. Or sometimes we say, you know, maybe we need to, you know, bring this up a notch and to have them come in twice a week or maybe come into the learning center once a week and go to the math lab or the writing center another time. So that's one of those sort of ways in which we built in support um, into the program for, for all of our students. Um, we also have a peer tutoring program, which is a program where our upper schoolers are running um, a tutoring for other students. It's a, a free program, obviously, and the students have been identified as teachers to be um, able to teach other students. And this is a great way for students or for families that don't want to pay for additional tutoring um, yet to get some additional support. 
Um, and then, you know, our advisor and program is probably like a lot of other independent schools, you know, except that, you know, we have groups that range from probably four to about six or seven students. We typically tap, tap, tap it at around seven students. And they're, you know, the conduit for the parents to, to be able to get information and to work with um, students for, for you all who are coming in with some type of academic plan or will have some type of academic plan here, you'll have that extra bonus of having Karen um, be a sort of a person that you can primarily talk with and coordinate with when things come up. Um, and then I just want to highlight this other program, which again is just in its it's in its second year. So there's that may know some older students that have graduated um, or may have heard it don't really know about this. And this is our Gatorade's peer mentoring program. Um, and so it was actually built as a way to fill two needs that we saw. We saw wanting to build out our leadership program more and offer more leadership training to our 11th and 12th graders. And then also help with the transition for eighth grade into ninth grade, both for Brimmer returning students and new students coming in. And so we developed this peer mentoring program where 12th graders are running um, monthly. They get training on a weekly basis and then they run a monthly, uh, either once or twice a week sessions with ninth graders where they're talking to them about transitioning to high school, talking about the rhythm of the year, just working on general community building piece. And it gives our ninth graders, older students that they're able to connect with and build out um, their social network. And then it also is at the same time providing actual leadership training to students. So we're, we tried to move away from this model of saying like, well, you're the head of a club, you should be leading that club or, oh, you're the captain. Like all these students now now um, are going through a leadership program. And the person that leads that Gatorades program has actually developed a leadership institute that's open to all of our students that are interested in learning more about leadership. So it's a pretty unique program for us. Um, we take a picture at the beginning of the year with Gatorade bottles <laughs> as a fun little, as a little fun little piece. Um, and then just to sort of round out my portion here. Um, you know, I think some of this experiences really are, we do put a lot of intentionality into this transition to Brimmer um, for, for students. And it really begins in the spring once you enroll and you sort of, you're connected one-on-one -on -one with who the advisor is going to be, as well as our Dean of Students and myself. And we have a lot of, because of our size, because we're not, you know, because we're going to be a, a class in that 40 to 45 range, we're actually able to, we, we pretty much meet individually with any family that wants to meet about what their upcoming schedule is and if they have questions about that. So everyone coming in is really getting a lot of, of care and attention to help them to help them with that transition. And I talked about some of these other pieces already. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now because I think that rounds Actually, out. Josh, can you can you move on to the next slide for oh, Karen? Yeah, right. Perfect. All right. So thank you, Josh, for that overview. I think what we'll do is is um hop over to Karen and sort of dig a little bit more into the support piece and then we'll open it up for, we'll do a, a quick admissions piece and then wrap up with questions. Karen, oh, you're, you're on uh, mute, Karen. <laughs> sorry, sorry, wanna be mindful of time. And I know, you know, for some of you, this is, this is what you really wanna hear, but I can tell you right now that through Brian, if I leave you with any questions, reach out to Brian, he can connect us um, if you have, more specific questions about your student and your whatever your questions about coming to Brimmer, I can I can guide you. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Um, I think you understand. You know, we do have a pretty robust learning support system at Brimmer um, from middle, you know, all the way up to graduation. I really I say to families that um, my role as director of academic services really runs the gamut from admissions in sixth grade all the way up to graduation after 12th grade. So um, I know these kids pretty well and I work really hard with families to make sure that students are getting the appropriate accommodations that they need. Sometimes we try to um, throw a lot of accommodations at students at the beginning in ninth grade and then we like to pull them apart. We really, you know, both boys were saying that it's so important for students to be self-advocates and to have some time management skills. I mean, those are really key for being successful, but we also teach those skills as well. Um, and we, so we talked a lot about accommodations and I think most of your, your the students that we're talking about from Carol, um, pretty much all of them will get 50% ex extra time because of their diagnoses. Um, we often 
don't give 100% extra time at school because it has some consequences down the road, particularly toward college um, admissions tests and things like that, but we can talk about that. Um, all students do have access to their computer. We use four function calculator if that's part of their plan. Um, and there's other things that we do. We have frequent teacher check-ins. And the, the, the nice thing about having students that come through with documented disabilities and, and learning differences is that then they're on my, um, my radar and my, you know, they come through my office. I speak to teachers regularly and advisors. So as Brian said earlier, it's an additional, I'm an additional resource and support for these students. And they, they know, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know, if, but kids have been knocking on my door the whole time we've been talking um, because they're coming in, they want to sit down, they have a question and they know my door is typically always open except when it's not. <laughs> so um, it's a very uh, fluid process down here. We're in, I'm situated in the library. This is where the learning center is. This is where the math lab that we talked about is. This is where the uh, writing center support is. So our library space, when you come to visit, you'll see it's very open, it's very fluid. Um, there's no stigma around getting resources and supports. So I think that's what's really wonderful about Brimmer. Did I do that quickly? <laughs> that was excellent. Anything else you wanna add before we- uh, Is there a second? I think there's a second. There's one more slide here. There you yeah. Go. The so, yeah, I think, and th at the very beginning, um, we want to talk about what we do. We are very transparent about um, who we are and the students that do best here. And we are very, you know, again, we're very accommodating. We try our best to, to support students all the way, you know, emotionally, academically, as much as we can. We do um, talk about modifications versus accommodations. And so sometimes students may have um, recommendations in their neuropsychs that say, to um, give students less volume of work or less homework or to modify the assignments. And th those are things we don't do at Brimmer, but we do work around some of those needs in different ways. And some of those ways that we talked about, again, are through the supports, you know, the math lab, having extra time with the math specialist, having extra time with writing. Um, and then we basically talked a little bit about our tutoring program, which I think is pretty unique in the area schools because I'm on a I'm on a, a monthly um, conversation with with people within my role at different schools around the area. And we're very proud of the fact that we offer tutoring for a fee, but we offer tutoring at Brimmer. Um, I, in my role, hire those tutors um, and I really make sure that they can fit our our cultural norms and the, the expectations that we have for tutors to be in constant contact with teachers and families and that they're following the school um, protocols and expectations. And so these tutors do come to school during the school day when kids have their, um, their open periods and they are able to access the tutors during the school day. And we families sign them up for a whole semester or for a whole year. And that way there's a lot of consistency and um, on-site communication with families and teachers. So that's that's something we're really proud of. Great, thank you, Karen. That, very that well, try to do it uh, quick. <laughs> very, very quick, and I know we, we just gave folks a lot of information, so we'll, yep. we'll certainly open it up in a minute. I just want to thank you know both both Karen and Josh, not just for being here today, but uh, for being uh, really sort of critical in the admissions process and really uh, an important playing important roles on the committee. So Karen will weigh in uh, and sit in on the admissions committee for anybody who um, submits uh, a neuropsych who who is asking for looking for accommodations. So Karen weighs in on that um, and really works with our committee to. Um, uh, understanding the learning profile of each student, what they would require if at Brimmer, you know, how that student would fit in, what, what supports they might need. Um, you know, I, I will say as an admissions officer, it, it's nearly impossible to know exactly what somebody needs until they're here. So we do our, our, our best and in partnership with Carol to understand the learning profile of each student, what they've been successful with in the past, how that might translate to life here at Brimmer. We would much rather put supports in place and pull back versus the opposite. Um, so it's not uncommon at all for students to start off with, with uh, a little bit more support 
uh, starting the year and then pull back in the second quarter or second semester. There was a question that just came in around um, is tutoring inclusive or, or digital? The, the one on one tutoring is a um, an additional expense. The writing center and math lab learning center are all included in tuition. Uh, so uh, a couple of quick things about the admissions process and we'll, we'll, we'll you know, spend the last uh, 10 minutes or so with any questions that you all have. Um, like a, a lot of our peers, uh, we, we follow the, the same sort of timeline. So it's a January 15th admission uh, application deadline, notification on March 10th, uh, with a family decision on for those who are accepted on April 10th to commit. So, um, you know, pretty standard here in the area. I know a lot of you have already visited or have uh, visits on the schedule because I'm, I'm recognizing some names here. Um, so that's great. You know, the, the best way to get to know a school is by visiting. I, I know you hear that time and time again from every school. Um, one of the, the most challenging things during the pandemic was really um, having to do things virtually uh, out, of, out of a requirement. It's great when you can do it like this out of convenience <clears throat> for both us and for families. Uh, really hard to show a school and the culture and the vibe, the community that we have here, which is what we pride ourselves on, um, if uh, you, you can't visit. So if you haven't yet visited, you know, please do so. We offer tours almost every single day. We do small group tours, and those can be booked right directly through Ravenna. You don't have to call. You can do it right, right from the, the comfort of your living room. Uh, and we do our interviews are booked through email or phone. And the reason for that is we want to really work with you to sort of figure out when we can get you in and and what works for you and your family. So tours are through Ravenna. Um, we also have two um, tour events coming up. One, uh, walk-in, these are parent-led tours, and there are still availability. I know on the December um, uh, 7th event, we are full on the November 16th event. We do cap those uh, based on capacity, but December Wednesday, December 7th, we'll have a, a, a tour morning as well, where you can take a, a tour with a current family and, and get it, uh, see the school through there eyes and ask those sort of parent-to-parent -parent, uh, types of questions. And then finally, we do have an information session coming up in on the first Friday in January, uh, Friday, January 6th. So ample opportunities to still visit the school. Uh, Josh alluded to or made reference to two uh, virtual events coming up. We do have actually tomorrow night, there's a DEIB event with Jessica Christian. She's wonderful. I definitely encourage you to tune in for that. Um, <clears throat> Tuesday next Wednesday is a virtual arts event, uh, and then the following night on Thursday, the 17th, is an uh, athletics event. Um, so if you're curious about the creative arts diploma program, the arts event might be a good opportunity to learn more about that. That's on the 16th. Both are at seven o'clock and registration through Ravenna. Finally, before just a, a couple more bits here, um, we do accept neuropsychs in lieu of SSAT. That comes up all the time, and particularly with, with Carroll families. Some students will um, will uh, submit the SSAT as well, and that's fine. One thing, unfortunately, during the pandemic, or fortunately or unfortunately, that schools are really assessing their testing requirements, and we've done the same here. Um, some schools that you're looking at uh, have decided to go test optional. We did that for the first uh, year really out of necessity of the pandemic um, and have gone back to our testing requirement with some flexibility um, so that, you know, neuropsych is a great way for us to learn more about a student's learning profile, um, strengths, and challenges. Uh, so those can be emailed directly to admissions at brimmer.org or to me directly. Uh, it is not possible for families to upload uh, their own documents in Ravenna. Um, so if it's not coming directly through Carroll School, it would come uh, directly to us and we would upload it for you. And finally, a lot of questions about numbers. Um, and, and I apologize, you will get an email tomorrow about those the, the arts events as well as reminders and the athletics events. Uh, but in terms of numbers, we typically bring in uh, between 16 and 20 new ninth graders per year. Um, that, that number is sort of tried and true. We did have 24 this year. That was a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, we have a, a slightly larger eighth grade class this year. So 16 to 20 sort of seems sort of reasonable at this point. And then 10th graders, we do see some C9 students. I don't know if there's any folks in the in the room today, uh, but typically four to six uh, 10th graders coming in. That's a much smaller application pool. So while we're, br while we're bringing in fewer students, we're also seeing fewer applications for, for 10th or 11th on a given year. So we threw a ton of information at you. I'm talking really quickly here. Uh, and I know Karen did, did as well, but I want to make sure that we give you some time to ask questions that are still on your, um, on your minds. So again, feel free to, uh, at this point, I think we, you can unmute yourselves or put, put a question in the chat. I'll just take a look at the chat here as well while you're doing that. 
but there's a question about sorry, how many how many students would typically Karen utilize the the learning center? We a rough a rough estimate. Many. <laughs> um, I so I I look at it in tiers. So some students just use it as a drop in, and um, you know once they get to I think like I think the way that Ben ex described it, Ben was one of those kids that once he knew that I was around and what I could do for him, he started showing up, um, and he just came as he as needed. Other kids, we have conversations um, in admissions, you know, after somebody is accepted and we talk to the family and we decide, you know what, this this student probably needs another point person that they can get to know well. And so we're going to assign them to the learning center once or twice a week at the beginning of the year, just so that they know how to access all of these things that are here, because that might not be something that they do automatically first week of school. Um, so I have about, I would say I have about 12 kids that come weekly, but then I also have my frequent flyers that I have a couple in here right now that don't really need me, I don't think, but they need the space because it's nice and quiet. And um, I think that having an adult body next to them just to give them a nod is the way to go. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think, and it always, you know, every semester is different too when new classes start up. Um, there's a there's a panic, and so some kids come in, or right before exams, kids will come in and you know help. They need help getting um, organized, you know, make set priorities, and sometimes it's just you know working on some study skills. So it really depends on the grade in the year. But I'm very busy, but I'm thankful that I'm very busy. I'm very very happy. Love it. Thanks, Karen. I might just add that. Karen, Karen deserves a tremendous amount of credit. She started in the middle of COVID and she was able to really tra help transform our library learning commons into this, we're, we're trying to call it instead of like just academic support, this academic success place where it's not just our students that have an accommodation plan. It's really all of our students are just coming through. And if you were to to sit around our, our learning commons for a little bit of time, you would just see this buzz of learning and sort of joy around learning, certainly some stress too. Let's not, let's not pretend that doesn't exist. But I, what she's helped to create there is sort of this open place in which people go to get support so that they can be successful in class, regardless of you know what their learning profile may be. And it's really been a wonderful thing to see a library be so, um, be so vibrant in, in such in this way. It's fun. And I'm right here. My office is right here and I, I'm in a in a glassed in area. So I get to see it all happening, which is really nice too. Yeah. Other questions? Could be student life, admissions, support. You know, one thing I'll say is we and I and I do this all the time is we we we're really proud of the relationship that we have fostered with with the placement department at Carroll. Um, you're working with the best in the business. They they are great. Um, they know our school well, and I, I think that's a really important piece. Um, you know, it, it, being able to schools change and they, and they evolve. And uh, just as Josh mentioned, with some of the developments that Karen has has implemented over the last few years, um, it's important to, to sort of keep in keep in touch. We'll have families that looked at us eight years ago uh, when their student was looking at kindergarten or, or nine years ago. And uh, we're, we're a different place uh, as most schools are. And as leadership changes, programs develop, it's important to sort of stay current. And um, we work really closely with, with um, Charlene and, and Cece and, and, and Al Francis. So, you know, great, great group. Um, we, we, we speak frequently during the course of the year. It's very, very common for, for me to pick up the phone and, and, um, just reach out to, to say hello or, or ask questions about a, a student, um, give observations about an interview that I just had or we just had. Um, so it, you know, it's um, we're, we're proud of that and we'll work closely with them throughout the course of the year to, to sort of you know, look at this fit and, and, and try to ascertain whether this is a great match. At the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to accomplish. And we're very transparent, as Karen mentioned as well. And um, you know, it's a very healthy relationship with a lot of back and forth. Thank you, Brian. We feel equally as fortunate to have such a wonderful partnership with such incredible people and such a wonderful team. 
And oh. I'm sure there may be another question, but in the yeah. event, there's not enough time. I want to thank you, Josh, Karen, Brian, Emily, just for your time. And I know families, I've received some messages already about how grateful for the, they are for this information. And uh, for the families that couldn't make it are quite thankful for the recording that will be coming their way. My, so. my pleasure. We'll, we'll send that out to you right after the, the meeting here. And, you know, certainly um, all the families on, online today, questions about your particular child, their learning style, your student, um, reach out, happy to, to dig in, um, in in more depth and, and sort of answer more personal questions. So uh, hopefully this is just a primer. Uh, hopefully, you, you know, again, you come away with a better understanding of who we are and, and what we do here. And um, we're really proud of our, our Carroll School graduates. Uh, they've gone off and done great things. We have a nice group of them over the last sort of decade or so, um, off in the world at great, great colleges and, and life achievements. So we're, we're we take the responsibility very, you know, seriously and, and uh, are committed to to identify the right match. So thank you for spending part of your morning with us. And again, reach out with any and all questions in the coming days and weeks. Thanks all. Thank you.